They must love the world. So what did he do eventually? He followed it. He followed it. Do you know how many people travel across from sea to sea to see women and men? I love you. I love you. I love you. Oh, I love you. I want to see you. He buys ticket and goes to London to see her. Or she buys ticket and goes to Asia, Japan to see him. They travel across continents, thousands of miles to just go and see somebody you love. Yet church is too far. You are in Uyo. Church is too far. You know how many minutes it takes me to get to church? 20. Keke is 1,000 a day. Church is far. I wish church was near. I wish Papa can start a branch here. That's why I'm no more coming. Church is far. They are not in love with Christ. They are not in love with the word of God. When you are in love with the word of God, you will trek if you don't have transport. Honey, you are my witness. You are my witness. Dr. Gabe, you know Sam Rosaria, North Gate, ABU. That was where my house was. I will trek from ABU, North Gate to Congo Campus. You know Congo? I will go to Congo campus to attend Bible teaching and trek back. And I did it not for one month, three months, five months, one year, two years. Rain will be falling, I'm trekking. Rain will stop, my body will dry with my clothes on. I'm not telling you a fairy tale. I will trek. And when I'm trekking, I'm singing. When I'm tired of singing, I'll be meditating on the scripture that was taught in the last Bible study. Until I get there. Sometimes we finish Bible study. You know those days of Philip Mokunga, those early days. Philip Mokunga, when they start Bible study from 6 p.m., they finish 3 a.m. I'm not joking. 3 a.m., we are still there. Then when we close, some will sleep there, but those of us that are strong will trek. I get home like sometimes 6 a.m., 6.30, I'm getting home, trekking, and I'm happy. 4 o'clock, I have left the house. I just came back 7 a.m., 4 o'clock in the afternoon. I am trekking back for the next Bible study. I'm telling you what we did. Because of passion for the word of God. Passion for the word of God. Except you are not in love with the word. Ah, I remember those days. We didn't have access to material. One day I went to one Professor Ishaya Audu's house. The wife went in and brought trunk boxes of Benny Hill's teaching materials. Kenneth Hagin. Oh, Kenneth Copeland. See them in trunk boxes. I felt like stealing that day. I said, oh God, I wish I can just take two sets. Those are the days we will go to somebody's house and see a book. Can I borrow? No. We will sit down there with pen and biro and copy the book. I'm not joking. I'm not joking. It's not today's kind of Christianity that people are just doing it one kind. No. We are talking about people that are sold out. That have seen that nothing in this world can compare with eternal realities. And they are sold out to eternal realities. This passion you see in me is not today. It started. It has been there. God is my witness. It was there even when I didn't have any hope that one day I will be a preacher at this level. And I didn't care whether I succeeded to be a preacher or not. All I wanted was to know God. All I wanted was to know Christ. All I wanted was to grow in the knowledge of Christ. When you see the way God is using us. The kind of investments we open up for God to make in our lives. Through deliberate and intentional availability. It's impossible for God not to use us. You pray for 15 minutes. You are looking for a chair to sit down. When some of us pray from 6 a.m. Till the following morning 6 a.m. Non-stop. We will sweat. At the end of prayer you will think a flood of rain fell. The whole floors are filled with water. They have to either mop it or use broom to push the water out. Sweat coming out. In Uyo here, is there any street I did not trek? There's no street I didn't trek in this town. Praying all night. Some of you know what I'm talking about. All night praying. Street to street. People are sleeping. We are trekking. We are praying. Sometimes dogs will bark. We rebuke them and command them to shut up. They will sit down and keep quiet till we are gone. I'm not joking. You know, I will tell the dogs, in the name of Jesus, sit down. Quiet. And I will pass. So when we are talking about demas, we are talking about ministry, we are talking about fulfilling God's purpose for your life. We are not joking. We are not joking. Good minister. Faithful minister. You know why is it that sometimes when pressure comes and people come under pressure, the first thing they want to shade off is ministry. You understand? Pressure, work, marriage, family, everything. Say, you know, so much pressure on me. I want to withdraw my commitment in church. So I can focus on the material world. The first thing you always think of. When you, there's, you're under pressure. The one you can give up. Is church. Uh, at least let me withdraw my commitment in church. Let me focus on this other one. Why should it be church first? Why is church the first one you want to withdraw from? Why? Why is it that when you are so busy. 
the one you give up is the kingdom. Why? When pressures come from everywhere, the only one you can give up is the kingdom. I want to withdraw so I can take care of other things. And the one you withdraw from is the one you actually need. You matter about many matters. Yet, one thing is needful. And your sister has chosen the better part that shall not be taken away from her. What is the better part? The world. Somebody was coordinating a house center. He just abandons it. Why do you abandon the flock? Because you love the present world. You are no more in love with the flock of God. Peter, lovest thou me more than this? Yes, Lord, I love you. Feed my sheep. The proof for love for God is to be able to create an environment where believers can gather and you help them to feed on the word of God. That's the true proof that you love him. Three times. Peter, do you love me more? Three times. In fact, the third time Peter said, ah, Lord, you know everything now. You know that I love you. The emphatic mention. Three times. You love the Lord and your house cannot accommodate brethren to study the word of God. You love the Lord. You love the Lord. And we're asking you to be a house center leader. Seeing your, the fact that you've been around this church for some time. And by virtue of being around, by now, you should be a pastor over some people. And you're too busy to have the time. Do you really love the Lord? Peter, lovest thou me more than these other things that you are in love with? Or you love the things of this world? You love business? You love Peter was a career man. He was a businessman. You love business, you love career. But Peter, do you love me more than all these other things, including business, including all the things? Peter said, yes, Lord, you know I love you. The only way to prove it to me is feed my sheep three times. And Jesus never changes. That still today is the proof that you love him. Do you really love me? Do you really love me? And he didn't say, do you love me? Do you love me more than this? More, so that you know that it's not just Jesus, I love you. Eh, eh. It is when all the important things of your life, all those things that you have put in your scale of preference, when they are all gathered together, then Jesus will say, you look at all these things that you love. Do you love me more than them? Yes, Lord. Okay. If you love me more than this, then create time and feed my sheep. Get in ministry. Get busy. That's the proof that you love me. Get busy. You can't love me and not love my dog. You love me, you love my dog. You love me, you love my church. You love me, you love my people. You love me, you create time to feed the people for whom I died. You love me, I love them that I died for them. So if you really love me, me I even died, your own, all I'm asking you is to care for them. Is to provide an environment where they can be fed. So if you really love me, create that environment and see to it that you help people to grow in my knowledge. It's not love in mouth. I love you Lord. I love you Lord. No, when the chips are down, it is not love in mouth. For God so loved the world that he gave. Love in the kingdom is sacrifice. Listen carefully. Love in the kingdom is not an emotion. It's not, oh, oh, ah, ah. No. Love in the kingdom is sacrifice. I'm going to give up one, two, three for my commitment to the kingdom. Lord, I love you. There is nothing I can ever do to respond to what you have done for me. Therefore, since your people are your heartbeat, I'm going to create space in my schedule to feed the sheep. I'm going to create space in my schedule to provide an environment to encourage brethren to study and grow in the knowledge of Christ. That's the proof that you love him. That's the proof that you love him. All over the world, all our campuses, Abuja, Lagos, Port Harcourt, Ibadan, London, America. Some of the people that are pastoring our campuses are business people, professionals. They are engaged in all kinds of commitment. Yet, they've created time to start a church in those countries where I am not even physically there. Pay for the venue with their money. Mobilize people to come in and encourage them to learn from me in their countries. Because they love the Lord. They love the Lord. A brother in Lagos said, the hall was two million. I took it from my business and I paid. Papa, I'm putting you on radio. Twice a week in our area in Lagos, there's a common radio station. I have paid for already. I just need materials. What is he doing it for? Am I going to clap for him? Am I going to give him an award? Am I going to give him a certificate? Nothing. None of those. He's doing it because he loves the Lord. He loves the Lord. 
One of our coordinators in London, Enfield. He said, Papa, there is one hall every time I pass by Enfield. I kept dreaming that one day that will be a church. The moment you gave us opportunity to pastor campuses, I went there and negotiated. Papa, I'm happy to tell you, they have given us, I have paid for the place. So help us announce so people in Enfield can gather there to worship. And what do they worship with? Television. Every time they gather, you see big men and women drive their cars and park and sit down to be watching television, year in, year out. Why? Because they are not in entertainment church. They are in a teaching church. So whether it is television or audio, as long as the word is being taught, they are happy to sit down and take notes. Look at what people are doing all over the world. Because they love the Lord. You, we give you word. We give you encouragement. We give you support. We give you everything. We are here. Move, pushing you, mobilizing you. And you are looking at us. Do you really love Jesus? Are you sure you really, are you sure you are really, are you sure you are really born again? Because born again is the love of God shed abroad in our hearts. Born again is the love of God shed abroad in our hearts. And that love of God is first of all expressed towards God himself. It's first of all expressed towards God himself. And how is it expressed towards God? My sheep. Feed my sheep. Feed my lambs. Feed my sheep. I love the flock here in Power City. I love all of you. You need to see the hours we spend. My family. They make sacrifices to help me. To be able to pastor you well. It's because we love you. Hours of study. It's not like I, can, I cannot preach like every other pastor is preaching. Just scramble some notes from motivational books. They are all over the market. Buy them. Scramble notes out of motivational books. Carry Bible verses, whether they are right or wrong. Attach it and make you feel nice. I, I can do that and just be happy with my life. No much. But why am I studying? Why am I digging scriptures? Why am I going through everything to be able to come out with the rightly divided world? Because I love you. And I want you to be fed well. I want you to be well fed and developed. So you can stand anywhere in this world. And declare the word of God without error. That's the only way I can show Jesus. That I love him. By loving you. Check your heart. Do you really love the Lord? And if you don't then you're not born again. Because born again is God's love. Shed abroad in our heart. By the Holy Ghost. And that love first of all. Is directed back to him. And not to him directly. But to him through his church. The church for which he died. Am I teaching good? 